Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the Coronavirus Pandemic. I'm Dr. Risha Desai. I'm the Chief Medical Officer here at Osmosis. I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Doctor, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases. So today we're going to talk about prone positioning on ventilators. So to kick things off, I found a review on prone ventilation in ARDS patients, and I found a really neat little figure I want to share with you that I think illustrates really clearly why prone positioning works. So this is figure three from that article, and on the left they show supine, a person lying on their back, and on the right they show prone, a person lying with their chest to the, the bed. And on the supine side, the left side, you can see that the heart is raised, right? It's closer to the sky, and it casts a bit of a shadow. And in fact, that's what that blue represents. It's kind of, if you imagine gravity, from that heart, it's compressing the lung tissue, and you can see how much it's compressing. This is two-dimensional, but now imagine in three dimensions how much volume of lung is compressed. And that's lung tissue that's not easily aerated. Compare that to the right side, the prone side, where you have much less lung tissue compressed. In fact, the blue wedge is so tiny, and that shows you the, the dramatic difference between prone versus supine positioning. You basically get back a lot more lung tissue because that lung tissue isn't squashed by the heart. Now there's one more key feature I want you to be aware of, and this is another paper about ARDS, and this one has a neat figure that I'm gonna show you. So here's the figure, imagine these little spheres, these little balls represent gas or air in the alveoli, and you can see in this third column here that your lungs are a bit like a bell jar, and if you imagine gravity acting on that bell jar, it squashes the stuff at the bottom. And so you just compare the volume of air in the top panel, supine, to the bottom panel, which is prone, and you can clearly see that there's better shape matching of essentially the shape of your lungs to gravity. And so you end up with more little balls of air or more aerated alveoli. And of course, they go into that in the final um, column there with a chart that shows you gas to tissue ratio. But essentially, the point is this that you have much better gas to tissue ratios when you're prone versus when you're supine, simply because the shape of your lungs is better matched to gravity. So way back in 2013, there was a study called the Proceva study where they actually tried to apply this principle of prone positioning to severe ARDS, meaning people that are intubated in the ICU setting, does being prone or on your stomach help outcomes? And you can see the people that were part of the study were essentially people that are intubated and ventilated and had been so for less than 36 hours, so kind of in the early stage of their disease, and they had severe ARDS, and they show you the criteria there. So one of the key things you're looking at is, did positioning of these patients affect mortality at 28 days and at 90 days? And what they found was that mortality at 28 days, so about a month, was much lower here, 16% versus 33% in the group that was lying on their back, and that was a very significant finding. And to show you visually what this looked like, here's a graph of survival, the prone group in red and in the, in the supine group in blue. And you can see the prone group essentially does way better for up to 90 days. So it's not just at the 28 day mark, but all the way out to three months, survival was better. So the American Thoracic Society, the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, and the Society of Critical Care Medicine put forth these clinical practice guidelines for how to manage patients with ARDS. And it's interesting to look at the recommendations. Let me just show you one of the key recommendations that they made. And it's a recommendation about the question of should patients with ARDS receive prone positioning. So this is the position paper from these societies on that question. And what they found was that in certain subgroups, there was evidence that it reduced mortality. And they talk about the fact that the amount of prone duration has to be uh, greater than 12 hours per day, so the majority of the day. They do flag some downsides though. So for example, they say prone positioning is associated with more uh, endotracheal tube obstruction, more pressure sores. So it's not all positive. There are some negatives that have to be considered as well. So tying this back to COVID-19, there's a study here that basically talks about how they looked at a handful of patients, 12 in total, and some received uh, prone treatment, meaning they were kind of alternating prone and supine, and others were just always supine, always on their backs. And those that were always supine, always on their backs, they basically had poor recruitability, meaning the airways in their lungs were not opening up nearly as well as the folks that were alternating. They had much better 
recruitability. And when I say recruitability, I mean recruiting more alveoli or more parts of the healthy lung tissue to be part of the aeration. And then there are also papers that talk about the Wuhan experience, meaning can we learn from what happened in Wuhan? And there's now a lot of research in terms of what seemed to work and what didn't. So this is one other place to get that sort of data. And looking at this paper, and here they talk about ventilation in the prone position being something that was widespread in terms of its use in Wuhan. They actually have a couple of pictures of how it was used. And they say it should be considered early in the disease, not late in the disease. So this is actually a, a picture of a patient who was intubated and ventilated while prone. You can see this person is on their chest. So finally, that brings us to the guidelines. These are the surviving sepsis campaign guidelines. They were just put out a few weeks ago on managing folks with COVID-19. And you can see uh, here under ventilatory support, number four is adults should be getting prone ventilation for 12 to 16 hours over no prone ventilation, meaning just being supine. So prone ventilation for 12 to 16 hours, being on your chest for that period of time. Now again, logistically, you have to work out how to do that. And this is considered a weak recommendation primarily because there isn't a lot of data in the COVID-19 population. But of course, we've seen from other situations, other types of patients, it seems to be quite beneficial. It basically opens up the lungs and gets more aeration so you get better gas exchange. And so that's the logic behind it. Mm. So thanks for tuning in. Remember to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to get daily updates. Uh, you can also check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for all of our resources. Remember to do your part to flatten the curve and raise the line. We're all in this together. Thanks a lot.